Manjaro or Trizepatite is actually a diabetes drug. But despite the fact that it is not technically a weight loss drug, it has been shown to create some pretty astounding weight loss results. One study actually showed that overweight individuals taking 15 milligrams of Manjaro once a week lost as much as 52 pounds over 72 weeks. And that's a pretty significant increase. It's 12 more pounds than patients taking semaglutide during the same time frame. Manjaro, as opposed to semaglutide, works by activating two hormones in your body. You see this little hamburger here. When you eat something, what it does is it tends to release certain hormones in the gut from L cells in your small intestine and K cells in your small intestine. And what they do is, one, they increase insulin release from your pancreas. Two, reduce gastric emptying to a certain extent. There are GLP and GIP receptors in the brain, particularly the hypothalamus, which reduce hunger. And then uh, they also seem to reduce glucagon release by the alpha cells in the pancreas and thereby reducing your plasma glucose, which is why they're very useful in helping people with diabetes. So as the diagram indicates, Manjaro lowers your blood sugar, which is really important since so many people in first world countries have chronically high blood sugar due owing to their diet, and that leads to diabetes. At the same time, it also makes you feel full, so you, you eat less. Kind of sounds like a little bit of a miracle, right? You know, just a quick fix, right? Look at this thing. Yeah. But I think yeah. with all good things, like, you know, what, like, what's the downside risk? Like, what's the, you know, side effects? So, there are some pretty common side effects of Manjaro. These would be things like nausea, vomiting, an upset stomach, diarrhea, and constipation. And they can occur in anywhere from 10 to 50% of patients, with nausea being the most common side effect. And I want to say this is, in my experience, very dose dependent. At lower doses, I've had patients not experience any of these side effects. And it's really with just dose increases. What are some severe side effects associated with Manjaro? These are fairly rare and in many cases have only been reported in case reports or in extremely high doses with patients that have been taking it for a longer period of time. So the first one is pancreatitis. So this is fairly rare. We're even uncertain if there is a truly causal relationship between the GLP-1 agonists and pancreatitis uh, because there are some studies that are conflicting. Some clinical trials have suggested patients uh, who have been on it even as long as two years showed no incidence of pancreatitis, whereas other studies have showed a, sm a very, very small percentage, less than 0.5%. We're not entirely sure. The main thing I would suggest is individuals who have significant abdominal pain to completely stop and monitor your lipase and amylase levels. Another problem is gallbladder disease. So that is both gallstone formation and inflammation or cholecystitis. This is really associated with patients that are on higher doses of Manjaro. So typically the dose regimen I use is no more than 2.5 or 5 milligrams a week for short periods of time, no longer than three to four months. But the gallstone formation as well as cholecystitis was associated with individuals on higher doses, 7.5 and 15 for longer durations, greater than nine months. After gallbladder disease, there's a concern with bowel obstruction. Bowel obstruction really just being an obstruction in your small and large intestine where food and liquids can't really move through. And it does appear to be associated with higher doses and longer duration in the case reports that I looked at. The next big issue is gastroparesis, which really refers to either delayed stomach emptying, your stomach just not emptying it in the typical fashion, or in worst case scenario, it's paralysis of your stomach. Here, again, research is conflicting. Some research studies suggest that there is no incidence of Manjaro and gastroparesis, but there are some case reports, and they're typically associated with patients who have been on it but also have had long-standing diabetes. Diabetes itself is a confounding factor because diabetes is associated with gastroparesis because it can affect some of the nerves that enervate that power the stomach in regards to its ability to contract and empty. The most concerning side effect that we see is maybe the correlation between benign and malignant thyroid C-cell tumors. One thing I will point out is it's not been associated with Manjaro or with semaglutide. It's only associated with some older GLP-1 agonists, liraglutide and dulaglutide, and it's only been shown in rats. One of the reasons why many physicians aren't as concerned about it is, again, it's only been demonstrated in animals with very high doses, like 10 to 20 times what a human would take. 
And humans tend to have a lot less C cells than rats. And again, these are the cells within the thyroid that are predisposed to tumor formation. Regardless of this, the medication is typically not recommended in patients who have a family history of a particular type of cancer, medullary thyroid cancer, or a conglomeration of different endocrine cancers known as multiple endocrine neoplasia. Yeah, that's a, that's a real tough one though. Okay, is there a way to kind of work with these? Like as if it's an Ozempic or a Almondaro to do it safely, right? And avoid kind of these risks? The way in which I kind of get around them is I basically use the medications for short periods of time, no longer than two to four months, almost like a kickstart when patients start their, their diet. And it helps them get into the sequence of things of eating lean proteins, healthy carbs, healthy fats, fats are high in omega-3 fatty acids, getting away from processed foods or foods that are high in saturated fats. And it really helps with adherence because of the fact that, you know, we do have these GLP-1 receptors in our hypothalamus and it reduces hunger, right? So while you're making the transition to a healthier diet, it allows you to adhere to it and then we just titrate off. I definitely do a calorie deficit as well to help encourage weight loss, right? And then the other thing is I try to avoid fast foods and processed foods. Now, it may be cool or not so cool thing about Manjaro as well as the other GLP-1 agonists is if you take ultra processed foods and fast foods, you are going to be more predisposed to developing some of those side effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and sick. constipation. So, you get sick from eating shit. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> what a good, so, like, So it kind of moves right? you away yeah. from choosing those... Uh, Reinforces, right? It reinforces away from those. That's funny. The other thing that's really important to mention is that you want to make sure that you are working out while you're on Manjaro and that your hormones are optimized so you can maintain muscle mass. One thing that people have been talking about, and this is more attributed to Ozempic or semaglutide, is Ozempic phase or Ozempic butt, where basically you lose so much weight, but you get a very you know, droopy, gaunt looking face or a droopy butt because you use a lot of muscle mass. If you do those two things, if you eat appropriately and train, and then you also optimize your hormones, your risk of losing muscle mass while taking these medications is minimized considerably. Manjaro is different from Ozempic. Uh, Manjaro, terzepatide, Ozempic, semaglutide. Manjaro works by activating both the GLP-1 receptors as well as the glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptors, right? So it, ha it does both of those. It has, it's essentially a combination of both of those peptides, whereas semaglutide is just a glucagon-like peptide one agonist or receptor. It just acts on those receptors. And that's primarily why Manjaro seems to work a little bit better because it works on those two receptors and has two actions. So yeah, I mean, I think it was a pretty good um, wrap up of like the fact that, uh, yeah, there are some risks to taking an Ozempic or a Manjaro, right? But there are some ways to mitigate those risks uh, through the right microdose, uh, through the right, you know, follow up and interventions after, perhaps monitoring, right? And, you know, not potentially not staying on it, you know, forever, right? I think that's the, the key takeaway, right, yeah. Dr. 